Hip dislocation. Hip dislocation can be a simple dislocation or it can be a fractured dislocation that involves the femoral head or the posterior wall of the acetabulum. Dislocation of the hip usually is a posterior type. However, on rare situation, it can be anterior dislocation. In posterior dislocation of the hip, the lower limb will be flexed, adducted, and internally rotated. Here is a normal position of the lower extremities, and here is the position of the lower extremity after posterior dislocation of the hip. In anterior hip dislocation, the lower extremity will be extended, abducted, and externally rotated. And you can see the position of the lower extremity after anterior hip dislocation. Here is an anterior inferior dislocation. We call it the obturator type. And the extremity will be flexed, abducted, and externally rotated. The extremity will not be extended as in other types of anterior dislocation of the hip. Hip dislocation of any type is an emergency. It must be reduced in less than six hours of injury. After reduction of the hip, try to get a CT scan to see any loose fragments in the joint. You will get an X-ray first, and then you will get CT scan after that. The CT scan will clearly outline the bony injury. The CT scan will be helpful to check for congruous reduction, for absence of fracture, absence of marginal impaction, or absence of loose fragment pieces inside the joint. Marginal impaction is more common in posterior acetabular wall fractures and it can lead to instability. And if not recognized, it can lead to instability of the hip. The size of the posterior wall fracture has an effect on the stability of the hip joint. If the patient has an irreducible dislocation of the hip, then you need to do an emergency surgery to reduce the hip. Reduction of the hip cannot wait till tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. It got to be done urgently. Hip dislocation with or without associated fracture can cause complications, such as a vascular necrosis. The risk of a vascular necrosis depends on the interval between the injury and reduction of the dislocation. Urgent reduction of the hip is mandatory to avoid this complication. Posterior hip dislocation can also cause sciatic nerve palsy. Reduce the hip and recheck the sciatic nerve function. Always reduce the hip early. Close reduction should be done in less than 6 hours. Check the sciatic nerve before reduction and after reduction. The common perineal nerve is the nerve that's usually affected and that will cause weakness in those flexion of the ankle with loss of extension of the toes. The injury can occur in varying degrees of severity and check for foot drop or check sensation in the first web space. Injury to the sciatic nerve usually occurs from dislocation of the hip and not from reduction of the hip. The length of time the hip remains dislocated influences the incidence and the severity of a major sciatic nerve injury. There is approximately 10% incidence of sciatic nerve injury from posterior hip dislocation. The partial recovery of the sciatic nerve occurs in about 60 to 70% of patients.
The patient usually requires an anti-foot drop splint to prevent equinus of the ankle. When you have a posterior dislocation of the hip, always check for injuries of the knee, such as with a dashboard injury. The force of the injury is transmitted from the knee to the hip. There may be associated posterior cruciate ligament injury or a meniscal tear. Examine the knee for injuries. An MRI may be needed. In case of high energy trauma, always look at the chest. There might be a tear of the aorta. Look for widening of the mediastinum on chest x-rays. There is a concern of deceleration injury involving the aorta when the patient has hip dislocation. Hip joint dislocation may be associated with a stabular fracture or fracture of the femoral head and you call that Pipkin fracture. The anterior hip dislocation will have a higher rate of femoral head impaction than the posterior hip dislocations. Treatment of hip dislocation, you will do emergency closed reduction of the hip within six hours. Early close reduction is done to avoid a vascular necrosis of the hip. After reduction of the hip, you will do mobilization of the patient with protected weight-bearing crutches for approximately four weeks. After you completed the close reduction and the patient has an associated fracture of the establum, assess the stability, especially if the fragment is not too large. Usually, between 20 to 40 percent fragment size, the hip stability is undetermined, and we don't know if that patient will need surgery or not. We don't know if that fragment is important for the stability of the hip or not. We know that the hip is usually stable if the fragment size is less than 20 percent, and we call it a stabler lip fracture. We also know if the fracture fragment is big, like 40%, that fragment need to be fixed because the hip will be definitely unstable if we don't fix it. When the size of the fragment is not big and not small, the best method to assess the stability of the hip is by examination of the patient under general anesthesia utilizing fluoroscopy. You will assess the posterior wall stability with the obturator oblique view. You will put the hip in flexion, adduction, and add an axial load. Check the medial clear space for opening. Opening of the medial clear space suggests instability. When you are taking an exam and there is multiple trauma patients and a lot of injuries, always look at the corner of the page where they have the photographs because you will have hip dislocated and the first thing you want to do for the treatment of the patient is to reduce the dislocated hip. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.